Hi guys! So, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, I have cut my hair and dyed it black. Um, this is probably a big shock for you guys because it's completely opposite of what I had before, which was long and, like, reddish. Um, but I was really feeling a change. I sort of... I'll just tell you guys, I had a little bit of a breakdown the other day. I don't know why. Nothing really extreme set it off. I just sort of was like, you know what? I'm gonna cut all my hair off and stop being so nice to people. So I guess it was maybe sort of that, maybe it was because I started a new school year, maybe it's because I've really been into a little bit darker things with my photography and with music and things like that. I just felt it coming on. I pulled a Miley, I pulled a Miley and a Marilyn Manson together. It went dark and short. Um, so I like it. It's very versatile. I can spike it up, like straight up, and I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I can pull it down and get some a little bangage going on. Which now look like I should be in some emo punk band from 2008. Um, and then I, what I did today was just pull it off to the side and back a little bit. And I really like it. Um, I haven't had my hair used with clippers in a couple years. Um, and I haven't had my hair this short in years. But I really like it. I'm happy with it. Um, plus I'm wearing my tooth necklace today, which can I just brag about this for a second? I think it's kind of awesome. Um, you'll have to excuse me too because I had a venti mocha frap earlier and so I'm like, woo, um, ready to go run a mile. Except not really because I'm wearing black jeans and it's 90 degrees outside. Um, today, I should just tell you guys what I'm going to do. Um, today I'm doing a um, favorite face products video and I'm going to just do like a best of the best video on every category. I'm going to be doing face products which is like foundations, concealers, primers, powders, things like that. And then I'll do like blush, bronzer, highlighter eyeshadow, eyeliner, mascara, lip gloss, lipstick, and lip pencil, uh, just like the best of the best in each category, and then eventually after all of that, once I started going to the dermatologist, getting my skin better, that's when I'll do a best of skincare, because you wouldn't want to take skincare advice from someone whose face looks like a bulldozer ran over it, so, um, let's hope I'm not too jittery. My favorite primer. I really don't wear primer all the time and before I got this one I didn't really have a favorite primer. I am wearing some today and the one I'm wearing is the Corez Vitamin E face primer which is silicone free. Um, I don't have a huge issue with silicones um, but I just think that the less amount of silicones I can put on my face the better just because I do find that they make me sort of oily um, which I don't know if that's true for everyone or just me maybe I'm weird but it doesn't really make my it doesn't agree with my skin as much as something that's silicone free this is very moisturizing though and it does say it is moisturizing which I didn't know before I put a huge gob of it on um, but you just need to make sure that you hydrate accordingly to this because this will give you a little extra moisturization and if you use too much moisturizer you're going to get really oily. This would be great for dry skin but I have no issues with it um, having oily skin if I moisturize properly and I don't use too much of either product. So this is the Corez face primer and I quite like it. Now on to um, complexion products and I'm going to start with foundations and I'm going to work in coverage levels because I feel like that's the most appropriate way that I could go about doing this. I'm going to start with the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer which has an SPF 30 sunscreen and PA Triple Plus and I believe PA Triple Plus or the PA rating is uh, more of a Japanese thing and NARS is owned by Shiseido which is a Japanese company. I haven't seen that many other American products with a PA rating on them so but I, I believe that is for to ensure that it's broad spectrum. But I like this. I'm in the shade uh, St. Moritz, which is medium one. It's a little dark for me. I probably could have used light three or light four. I don't know how far it goes. I think it only goes to three, but I could have used light three and that would have been fine. But this just gives me a nice like tanned look without giving me too much coverage or making me look orange. I wear this on days where I don't want to look like I'm wearing makeup, but I just want a moisturizer on my face and a little bit of color and a little bit of like a tanned look. This could work any time of the year as well. It does give you that tan look for the summer, but if you need a little kind of kick to your skin, if you're looking kind of dull and flat, this can work in the winter too because it does have moisturizing properties to it. Uh, $42 for this, but you are getting 1.9 ounces compared to 1.7, so you're getting a little bit more bang for your buck. It ends up being cheaper than the Laura Mercier foundation, or tinted moisturizer, which I've never used. The only other one I've used is the e.l.f. one and the Stila one which I actually have the steel one right here. It's a little sample. It has shimmer in it, which is not okay with me. It's quite good. It doesn't make me overly oily either, because I find that, I, I mean, I would imagine other tinted moisturizers, unless they're oil-free or oil-controlling, they would make me, make me a little oily. So, 
this is really good and I like it. It's the Shiseido Sun Protection Liquid Foundation Sunscreen SPF 42 with a PA triple plus rating. Lots of PA triple plus. Lots. I think all of Shiseido's sun protection line has this blue and orange packaging, uh, which is orange on the inside and it's quite cute. I'm in the shade SP50. Um, this has only mineral sunscreen in it. It's titanium dioxide, 13.9%, which is probably going to be really good for anyone who has breakouts or easily irritated skin because I find using something with chemical sunscreen in it really irritates my skin if that's the only type of sunscreen it has. Uh, I, my skin much prefers mineral sunscreens, especially when I'm having active breakouts. But I like this. You have to shake it up really well because I believe that the sunscreen either separates from the product or causes the product to separate. It is a, a quite a liquid consistency. It's not really, really extremely runny, but it's not by any means like a Revlon Color Stay, very thick very creamy foundation. This is more of a smooth liquid. This I, I think this gives me about medium coverage. It covers up my blemishes adequately and I'll only have to put a little concealer in certain really bad places. But for day-to-day -day wear, if especially if you are, do, are doing something outside, uh, then this could be excellent for you because it is water resistant. As I've said before, I wore this through rock climbing. I had no powder on and I was sweating like a dog, which dogs don't sweat odd saying, isn't it? And I was sweating buckets and it didn't budge. I still looked flawless afterwards. So, you know. But this is really great. I recommend this to people because it is very long wearing. Josh recommended this, so I went out and bought it, of course, because that's how things work. The only thing, though, you do need to take this off with a makeup remover, a separate makeup remover. I use a cleanse off I use a cleansing oil, cleanse off oil from MAC, and then I go in and cleanse my skin because if you don't, then you go leave this in your pores and it's going to cause some problems. So just make sure you take this off um, and they recommend applying it with a damp sponge. Definitely the best way to apply it. So Shiseido Sun Protection, two thumbs up. That's why it's in here. Next one, L'Oreal True Match. This is, I think, my favorite drugstore foundation. Um, the shade is a little weird for me right now. It's a little too beige. It used to be perfect, but maybe that's when I was a little bit less tan. So I'll probably reserve this. Well, I might get a new shade to match me right now because this does have some slight powder particles in it, so it's good uh, for oil for oil control. Um, this has a sunscreen of SPF 17, um, oil-free all-day wear. I'm in the shade W3, which is nude beige, uh, and this is a lot cheaper than most other drugstore foundations. I believe this is seven or eight dollars or something like that, but I think it's because they spend less money on packaging. This is very small, very simple packaging. It's tiny. Um, but I, I love this because this is like what I put on without thinking about it. Like if I just know I want a good foundation to wear day to day, this is the one to go to because it's got that sunscreen. It is good at oil control. It's not like a super oil controlling product, but it doesn't certainly doesn't make me any more oily. And used with a powder, I mean, I have no issues with like greasiness at all throughout the day. Uh, it is very blendable and it does say super blendable. They have a wide shade range. It's inexpensive. I mean, you really can't go wrong with this. Um, the only thing I would say is it's probably not great for someone with a dry skin because it does have those slight powder particles in it. No, it's a mineral sunscreen, so that makes it even better for someone who has a little bit irritated skin. So uh, this is excellent. I would highly recommend it, and chances are you will find your shade match. I think it's great for lighter skin people because they have, you know, if you're pale but you're not pink toned, then you can find something that is golden toned or more neutral toned, so that's definitely a big plus. I actually use my fingers to apply this like all over my face. I find it's the best way. And then the next one is the NARS Sheer Glow, which this is, I think, my favorite like higher-end foundation. Although this is, I forgot to tell you prices, 42, 35, 6 or 7, and then this is 42 as well. I might have gone up a dollar, I think. Um, I'm in the shade Punjab, which is medium one as well. Just when you look at it, it's a little too peachy. And occasionally it can look peachy, but you know, you just gotta be careful. It does seem to suit me perfectly though. Uh, this has, I think, a more, it has a very serum-y texture, and I think that's because it does provide skincare benefits, so NARS claims. There's no sunscreen in here whatsoever, so this is what I wear if I'm getting pictures taken with flash, like if I'm going out and I know we're gonna be taking pictures, this is what I'll wear because it makes my skin look perfect. Sheer Glow is a very misleading name though because there's no shimmer in here, there's no glitter, it's not overly really glowy or overly hydrating, it doesn't make you look really shiny, it just gives that 
that natural look to your skin or it looks like you're not wearing makeup, that's this finish. Um, very, very good stuff. I wouldn't, I can't wear this every single day because it does have a very high silicone content and it's very slippery and that can tend to irritate my skin a little bit. Um, at least I think it irritates my skin. I don't know, maybe I'm just imagining things. But I like to say this for special occasions when I know I want to look good and I know I just want to put something on and know I'll look drop dead stunning. This is amazing. Um, they do have a pretty wide shade range as well and they also have sheer matte. So if you want to look matte, then, I mean, and you don't want to have like a natural satin finish to your face, then maybe check that, that one out instead. Um, no pump with this, which everyone complains about not having a pump with foundations that don't have a pump, but I don't see the big deal. Just pat on the back of your hand, like, get over it. Actually, what I do is I take my finger, hold it over the opening, tilt my finger over, and then put dots on my face, and then buff it out. Um, this is great. I would highly recommend this. It's beautiful, and I love it. This is, I guess, technically the last foundation, but it's the uh, Cover FX Total, it's either Total Coverage or Complete Coverage, um, whatever, it's their cream foundation. And this is like, I guess, their cult product. Um, it looks very peachy in the, in the uh, container, in the uh, compact. Um, and to be honest with you guys, the first thing I want to tell you, the shade range is not that amazing. I mean, I know, I, according to Josh, he wears, I think it's E0, which is, he said it's like the perfect match for his face. It's so hard for him to find matches because he is so pale. But, I mean, I have the shade M40. I tried M30. It made me look like a ghost. And this one is not perfect either. It's actually a little dark sometimes. And so it's like, they have like E and M and O for Oliver, something. I don't know. They have a really wide shade range. But I think the shades don't differ that much from each other. So that's, I think, one of the only downfalls. This will cover anything, anything and everything. Um, it is $42, I believe. What is it with the $42 price tag on here? It's all, it seems all like a coincidence. It does come in this compact. I think you can actually pop the pan out too. Yeah, you can. There's a little place for you to pop the pan out if you wanna put this in a palette. But uh, if you need to cover acne, if you have pretty severe acne or really, really pigmented red blemishes on your face, which I do, and I have dark spots, like almost like scabbing or something I don't know but it's like a dark red brown this will cover this too I'm pretty sure this will cover found or tattoos as well um, I can't see any reason why I wouldn't if you just work with it and layer it and if you do thin layers and build it up you'll be able to get good coverage without it looking too heavy um, and make sure you just blend it really nicely into the rest of the surrounding area but I mean you need good coverage this is the definition of good coverage so Definitely check this out if that is something that you are needing. And then, this is sort of like a miscellaneous thing, but this is the Bobbi Brown Face Touch-Up Palette, and I've got Josh and Julia wanting this. They no longer sell it, it's discontinued, but you can find it at CCO's, that's where I bought mine, and uh, on allcosmeticswholesale.com. I think they have porcelain, beige, which is what I wear, I wear beige. Um, and I think it's like deep or deep dark, but it's got a foundation stick right here and then a full-size corrector Or the corrector is the pink one and then a full-size concealer and then a little bit of the powder I think this is like a two gram amount and then the foundation stick is I don't know I have to read the box. I don't feel like reading the box But I know that these the, con the corrector and the concealer are both full-size I could have bought them from my CCO, but it would have cost me I think they were going for $17 a piece. What's that? $34 right there. I paid $27 for this and I'm getting a full size of each and then a foundation stick and then a powder. Uh, it's got a mirror. This is what I brought with me traveling and it's perfect for travel because it's got everything you need. Again, perfect for touch-ups as well as the name would entail. Uh, great to stick in your bag. Great to bring with you. It's very slim. A MAC eyeshadow in comparison thickness wise. If you can find it, get it. Now on to like powder type things. I don't actually have a favorite setting powder. I have yet to find one that absolutely amazes me. Powders. Studio Fix. Not surprised. You guys are probably not surprised that I'm mentioning this. As you can see, I've hit pan and I rarely do that. I'm in uh, NC40, which is a little dark and a little too peachy tone. I'm probably more of an NC35. But the finish that this gives is worth it for me. I wear this when I'm the darkest in the summer. Um, it's a powder foundation. It gives... I'd say medium in coverage. When you put that on another medium coverage regular liquid foundation, you're going to be able to cover pretty much anything. Wide shade range, good for oily skin. It comes in a compact like this. Um, about the same size as the cover effects, actually. 
I just love this velvet finish. That's how I describe it. So I would definitely really highly recommend this too. And then Laura Mercier Mineral Powder. This is a fairly recent one, but I, I've just absolutely fallen in love with it. I wear this over my L'Oreal True Match on like a day-to-day -day basis to school when I just don't want to think about what I want to wear, something new. Looks amazing. The finish that this gives, it's got pearl powder in here. No shimmer, but pearl powder. Doesn't look heavy. It doesn't give a lot of coverage, but it does have zinc oxide and SPF 15 in here. Um, the finish is beautiful. It, the color is really beautiful. I use rich vanilla. Um, and it just looks really good and I really like it. And the packaging is genius because it's got a little sifter that you can cover up. So good for travel. And then we'll do concealers. Um, oh, I have to mention this. Very recent purchase as well, but I've fallen head over heels in love with this. The Hourglass Hidden, Hidden Corrective Concealer. Well, I have the box right here. Hidden Corrective Concealer. Yeah, I use the shade tan, which is actually pretty much a perfect match for me right now. I'm wearing it today. This is what I, I don't wear any foundation when I wear this. I literally just put this on my blemishes and then I blend out with either a brush like this or, um, no, actually I use this pretty much all the time. A regular foundation brush covers any, everything but does not cling to dry patches. It's got vitamin E and like I think a little bit more hydrating properties to it. So this cover effects can sometimes cling to dry patches because it is such a waxy cream whereas this is so creamy but it's not creamy enough to where it slips off my face that's why I can't use a lot of liquid concealers because they will slip and slide and I love this I don't know what I would be without this actually um, very highly recommend this and then we'll do this the uh, elf under eye concealer my favorite under eye concealer can I be honest three bucks um, I don't have really bad dark circles. I might have a little fallout and might look a little dark under my eyes, but I don't have bad circles, bad dark circles. I think it's less common in males. Um, so what I do is literally, it's in a wand form. Just take it, put it on, blend it out, put a little bit on my eyelids and like the darkness on the outer corner of my eye. Put a little powder and like that's it. Like it just looks so good. Um, it doesn't provide a lot of coverage, so I would really only recommend it for someone who doesn't need a lot of coverage. Um, but it's just, so I don't ever think about this when I put it on because it just, I know it's going to look good. I don't have to worry about it looking bad. It doesn't settle into my creases and my fine lines under my eyes, so really good stuff. This is my current one, and I've used this one, like, um, so I've gone through one of these already and I repurchased it, if that tells you anything. And then a concealer I loved, but they, I don't think they sell it in stores anymore. I might have to order it online. The Milani HD Advanced Concealer, it's like the clicker type. Like, literally, it's not clicking because I've used it all up. This is beautiful. I used the shade 2, which is medium, just under my eyes. And it's like, this and this are like my top. I think that is all I need to mention. I'll mention brushes too. Um, I know I already mentioned this. This is actually my favorite way to apply foundation is a flat brush like this because buffing really tends to irritate any dry patches I have on my face. But I do really love the effect of buffing. Um, so when my face is not irritated and I don't have any dry flaky patches, buffing is my way to go. I love the e.l.f. powder brush. I have a couple other buffing ones. Real Techniques one, I'm sort of growing to not really like it anymore. I just, I don't know, it's sort of meh. Mainly because it's synthetic, it's dense, it's flat, it's cheap. I have a couple of these. Well, here's one, here's one, like... And uh, actually, I'll still use this even if I'm not buffing to just push powder on my face. Like, I'll set with this, push powder, or... Actually, what I did was I blended out my concealer today and then I just pat it on top to make sure, like, not only to get a little extra off onto the brush and disperse it through the rest of my face, but just to help blend everything even more. Uh, to set, I actually really like using this brush if I'm setting specific places. This is like a craft brush. I don't even know where you can get it. It's old. No idea, but it's small. It fits perfectly in places. Um, and actually, the Real Techniques contour brush is perfect for setting under the eyes and on the face. Uh, I know they make a setting brush, but um, I really like this for setting. But just like day to day, I'll just take a big fluffy brush like this, the e.l.f. complexion brush, get it on my brush and just pat it on my face or sweep it or whatever and just set with a big fluffy brush like this. Don't even have to think about it. Amazing. And then for concealer, I really like to use the Sonia Kashuk fluffy crease brush. This has black eyeshadow on it right now because this is what I used to blend. It's amazing as a blending brush as well. But um, it works perfectly for under the eyes. Don't know if it's synthetic. 
but um, it works wonders with this. And then for concealer, actually sometimes we'll just use this to be honest, just to blend it out. But if I'm spot concealing, I'll use this Real Techniques Detailer Brush because it is tiny and I just want to conceal in the places that need concealing, not anywhere extra. Why put makeup on your face if you don't need it? So yeah, oh and then sponges. I love the Sonia Kashuk blending sponge, I really do. Uh, I think it's amazing. It looks, this and the Nars Sheer Glow, they were made to be like lovers. And then uh, I used the sponge that came with the Shiseido foundation to apply the Shiseido one, just dampen it a little bit. And then for the Laura Mercier mineral powder, I apply it with this e.l.f. Kabuki um, because I don't like a flat brush with mineral powder or for that one at least I just buff this on and it spreads the product evenly and makes sure it doesn't look too heavy in certain areas so that was a long video I know it was I'm very sorry you guys but I just you know how I ramble and plus I'm on caffeine so give me a break but um, hope you guys enjoyed it I will list everything below and if you have any questions feel free to ask yes I hope you guys enjoy this and I will talk to everyone later bye